This video shows my pink and yellow rose and explains how I painted it using classic watercolors. So first up, I drew it out on 300 GSM watercolor paper, chose some brushes, did a couple of color testers and chose my colors. So first up, Windsor Green Blue Shade, then Permanent Alzarin Crimson and Sap Green for the background. So I'm using all three of those colors in the background and I'm not mixing them on a palette first of all. I'm just dipping the brush in the paint, putting it straight onto the paper with a big blob of water on the brush. And what I do here is I blend in this bottom left hand corner and blend it out into kind of like blankness because what I'm going to do is go all the way around and join up at the other end and I didn't want a drying line. So what I've done is I've faded out that bottom corner. So here you can see me adding the permanent alzarin crimson and the Windsor green blue shade together, putting in just little bits of sap green every now and again, just so there's a slightly um, warmer, greener color in there. So breaking up the really, really dark colors that I've chosen to do the background of the flower, first of all. And to do the actual petals of the rose, I've chosen cadmium yellow pale and permanent rose. And I've color tested these two, so I know that they're gonna work well for me. So you can see me kicking off with a size three sable brush. So I'm using quite a small brush for this. And I'm doing combinations of just those two colors together, putting in some yellow, putting in some of the rose and blending them together, adding a little bit of water. And I'm still sort of finding my way a little bit with how I'm blending them together here, which is why some of the petals, obviously with red and yellow together, end up getting very, very orange at the beginning. But as I go in a little bit closer, you can see exactly how I'm um, adding the colors and blending them together on the paper again. Not a lot of palette blending going on here at all. I'm just adding a bit of water, a bit of the rose, and where I think it needs it, a little bit of the cadmium yellow pale. And I'm kind of blending them back and forth together on the paper. And this approach of mixing on the paper is really, really quick, much quicker, obviously, than using the palette to mix your colors carefully and then apply them. And it's also got a bit of unpredictability because I'm putting those colors on and the water and I'm letting them blend and mix on the paper. It might not go right, might not exactly uh, what I want, but I'm okay with that because I'm figuring that I can maybe overpaint and do some extra layers and change anything later on if I feel as though the colors that I blended, first of all, didn't quite work out. Another thing that you'll see me doing here as I go petal by petal through the flower is leaving um, paper white highlights. So where the part of a petal needs to be really, really bright and really, really um, catching the light strongly, I leave it white. I don't put any kind of color there, no matter how pale. And this is something that I've only really gotten into doing in the last couple of years. I never used to understand the importance of kind of paper white highlights in watercolor, but I'm getting there. Uh, and on this one, it was super important to get that really, really bright sunlight uh, bouncing, shining off the petals. So at this point, it's still looking a bit abstract because of course, I don't want the paint to bleed into the petal next to it. I want them all to look super crisp. So that's why you can see me sort of bouncing around the painting and moving from one petal, leaving a gap, doing another petal, and then going back uh, and doing petals next to petals that have already dried so that the paint doesn't bleed. But if I'm honest, in the original reference photo that I'm working from, it's much more of a yellow, pink flower. I think what I've done here is, is as I'm mixing the colors, like I said, on the actual paper itself, there's more shades of sort of very, very pale orange and even in some cases dark orange that you can see in the picture. And when I compared it to the, uh, the photo reference, the photo reference was much more sort of pale yellow with pink areas, you know, and kind of vice versa. Whereas this one has got pink yellow areas, but also a lot of nice orange areas. It's not something that I set out to do. It was kind of a happy accident, if you will, um, from when I was doing it. It just kind of turned out that way. Uh, and that's kind of good, because I always worry that I'm a bit too slavishly copying photographs. So the fact that the colors in this one turned out actually looking very different, very vibrant, much richer, perhaps, than the actual reference photo I was using, I'm really, really pleased with. And, you know, it was a good, happy accident. Hopefully you've already noticed some of the extra sort of layers, the second layers of color and also dark shadow that I've put on some of the petals so far. I put a, the color on originally and it was a bit too light and I wasn't so pleased with it. It didn't look dark enough. So I've gone in on some of them and added that second layer of dark shadowy color, really just to make the petals look more 3D and the overall flower look more three-dimensional so that some petals are sort of popping out towards you and some are growing upwards and outwards. Hopefully the paintings reach a stage where it looks a little bit less abstract now and is beginning to look more like an actual rose. And as I go close up here, you can see again how I blend the yellow into the pink and get those kind of mid shades of orange and darker shades of orange and add a little bit more um, 
permanent rows. But also, I think with some of the darker areas here, I'm adding in a little bit of the extra um, permanent alzarin crimson as well, just so I can darken those rose um, tints and get them to be even stronger shadow areas. I needed that permanent alzarin crimson. So cheeky little sort of uh, cheat there. I'm using a third color to make some of the red areas darker. The size 3 sable brush that I'm using here is absolutely perfect for this. The picture is drawn inside a 12 by 12 centimeter square, so it's, it's fairly small. And for getting each one of those individual petals, the size 3 round is a really lovely brush with a fine tip. And you can get in all these little nooks and crannies so much more easily. And what you can see with this very bottom petal that I've done, I put in a very, very pale yellowy pink wash on that to begin with. And I know what I'm going to do is get some darker color and put that on. But I'm going to leave some of that yellowy pink pale wash that I put on originally. I'm going to leave some of that showing just at the edges uh, to emphasize, you know, the sort of like light effect on it. So when I get in there now and I start adding this dark color and combining my permanent rose and my um, cadmium yellow pale together. I'm deliberately not taking it right up to the edges, so I'm leaving the kind of layer underneath just showing along the edges, just for a little bit of kind of a light effect. So what you can see me doing now is going in and tweaking little bits. You know, virtually all of the petals are done now, but I'm sitting back looking at it and thinking, no, some of them need to be a bit darker, some of them need to be a bit lighter perhaps. So I'm going in with the brush and I'm just adding extra little bits of color here and there. Um, usually just to add depth, just to make things look a little bit uh, more shadowed and increase the contrast between the light and the dark areas. And after pretty much doing the whole of the flower, I felt like the background wasn't strong enough, didn't provide enough contrast for the highlights. So I went and darkened the background with another layer, and then I decided I wanted to put in some kind of the leaves, or show at least a bit of the leaves in the bottom. So I decided I'd pick up some of the color using a synthetic brush. So that's what you can see me doing now. I'm putting the brush into the water jar, getting clean water on the brush, and then I'm working over the top of the color that I've put on, this sort of greeny red background. And then I'm using a piece of um, paper towel, paper tissue, to blot and lift that color back off the actual paper. And with two layers of um, dark watercolor in the background, when it lifts off, it leaves this kind of grainy pale highlight in the background, which I want to be the edge of the leaves that I'm going to paint in. And it's, uh, it's a really nice kind of effect. It's almost like when you're using charcoal and you, you know, smear charcoal and then perhaps rub out a little bit to show a highlight. It's got that nice kind of kind of smoky, grainy quality to it. And you might be wondering why I decided to do that. Well, when I was looking at the picture, I just felt as though the flower kind of floated in that dark background. And I felt it needed something in there to kind of ground it in reality. So that's why I decided to put the leaves in. So once I had all of those highlighted areas, they looked a bit too white for me. So I decided what I was going to do is get a bit of sap green, just mix some pale sap green, simple as that, get the brush, and then paint over those highlights so that the edges of the leaves, instead of being a bright white, which would kind of detract from the flower, I thought, I thought I would just paint over them with a light green, which again, took them into the background. You can still see that there are leaves there, but it kind of takes them into the background and regresses them, takes them back further. Painting the highlights here in just one color is pretty simple, but the number one thing I've got to be careful of is kind of reactivating those dark colors underneath with, with this um, light color and blending the two together. So I've got to work quite lightly and quite quickly and not too much of a brush stroke unless I'm actually trying to blend the color underneath with the sap green to kind of um, create a bit more of a gentle transition between the colors. So there's the finished painting and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I love the colors, I love the depth, I love the strong contrast, but let me know what you think. Leave a comment below telling me what you think and if you liked it, please share and subscribe. That's always appreciated. And if you want to watch some more of my work, then you could catch the previous watercolor video that I did uh, where I painted a Turk's cap lily, this lovely orange kind of curled up petal lily. Um, using watercolor markers and brushes and the links for all of this and other watercolor videos that I've done are below. Thanks so much for watching this video and supporting my arty channel.